Hello guys, Bud here with Dependable Lawn Care and uh, most of you that have watched my videos have seen the uh, sulky aerator that I made uh, using a, an old, I believe it was a craftsman at one time <laughs> but a, uh, an old pull behind spike aerator okay uh, this thing actually worked out great um, had a lot of fun with it last year and made money with it. You know, I aerated a lot of lawns in the uh, spring and fall last year with this little setup and uh, and had a lot of fun with it and like I said, more importantly, I, I made money with it. So uh, <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of rethinking. I've been mulling this over for a while and I'm rethinking my design. Um, the only issue I've had with this, and it was right at the end of the season, is that uh, well, you can see that play in the spikes. Well, it wasn't rated, you know, this aerator was never rated for 180 pounds. <laughs> and so it lasted quite a bit longer, actually, than I thought it would because of, of my weight on top of it. Um, but between hitting rocks and hitting roots and stuff like that, you know, it, it started to have problems with the shaft. You can see the shaft is a little bit bent, so I had to add some supports. And the little plastic bushings that are underneath those spikes are starting to wear out. And so I was going to have to rebuild it. And so that was my first thought was, well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beef it up and, uh, and just rebuild, just basically rebuild the spikes. So that was my first thought. And then I got to thinking, you know, if I'm going to go to all that trouble and do all of that, why not go ahead and make it into a plug aerator? Um, you know, upgrade the design a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do, I purchased a uh, AgriFab 48 inch plug aerator. And I was originally going to just turn it into a sulky aerator. But there's some things that I really like about this design and the size. You know, this is a 36 inch which allows me to fit into some of the backyard gates um, that I wouldn't be able to fit into with a 48 inch aerator. So, so instead of basically taking this all apart, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, is use the parts that I like and that I want to use from the AgriFab, you know, mainly the, uh, mainly the plug aerator setup uh, it's also got the uh, the drive tires that allow you to lift the aerator up and roll on tires when you're not using the aerator itself. So I think I'm going to incorporate that and incorporate the plug aerator system into this. So basically I'm going to condense that 48 inch aerator down to a 36 and uh, kind of rework the bottom part of this aerator. Um, I really like how the how the hitch works, and as as you can see, this is how it's hooked up to the mower. I mean, it's very simple, just a pin and some washers, but it works. So this allows pivot side to side, and then also the pin allows your up and down movement. Okay, so it's it's a good solid design as far as the hitch is concerned. Um, obviously, the seat is great. Um, you know, you can stand when you want to stand, when you need a little bit more control or balance. And on, on bigger uh, properties that are more flat, then you can just sit down and, and go along for the ride. And it's, uh, it's a lot easier on your back. Because standing on this aerator, it does, um, you know, you bend over a little bit to operate the mower. So it, it isn't the greatest on your back after, after a while, especially if you're doing this all day. So, um... That's probably enough of me rambling on. Uh, let's get into the build, guys.
step one, I cut off the old uh, spike aerator assembly. Now it's time to uh, start figuring out how I want to mount the new parts back on. So uh, I know I'm going to have to do a lot of modifying because I'm shrinking that 48 inch aerator down to a 36. But I want to keep the same number of spikes. Move on to the next part. This is the side plate off of the AgriFab. So I want to use it because it's already got the right size hole and uh, the guard is actually about, or the, the end, is actually about the size of the tines and everything. Um, but I don't want to center it like it was before. So instead of having it here, I think what I'm going to do is move it this way and shift that weight backwards. So actually what I'm thinking is uh, something like that. So the tines used to be right in this area. Now they'll be shifted more towards the rear. Here's the progress so far. I have both of the end pieces welded in place. As you can see, they're, uh, they're nice and squared up and with each other. So I took a piece of pipe to use as an axle or a shaft so I could mock this up. So I just wanted to show you that uh, I took an inch and a half out of each one of those and I haven't welded them back together yet. They're, like I said, they're just sitting there. But uh, that came out darn near perfect as far as length goes. That one spacer on the end, I'll have to cut about an inch off of it, but otherwise Spacing wise these things are just I mean About as close as I could get I got it up on jack stands so that I can Weld those spindles back together and again. I'm just going to run a bead through the center Weld it up so uh, next thing is to probably work on this top piece. new day a little bit nicer day it's uh, quite a bit warmer today and the sun's out so anyway I've got this flipped upside down as you can see and I took a piece of the agrifab tongue and cut it off and welded it in here 
as a center brace. And then I'm going to uh, run a center brace for the shaft off of that. I have all the knives bolted on to the spindles. Aerator all in place, uh, the assembly that is, everything has good clearance. Uh, I made a center brace out of the factory brace. It, the factory brace had a hole right here for the axle to go through. And uh, what I want to do is actually set this, set one of the spacers into this and weld it in place and that way the center brace um, will actually be this bracket plus the spacer it'll be a little bit more solid a little bit more durable believe we're ready for the final assembly. Guys, I'm getting ready to do the final assembly and testing. Uh, final assembly, essentially all I've got left to do is put the uh, tire back on on this side and I need to drill a hole and uh, add a bolt for the shift lever to rest up against. Uh, so here's what I've got going on. I'll show you from this side over. So the shift lever is welded to the axle and I've got one large washer right here okay now the axle runs all the way through and then on the other end it has a uh, clevis pin holding it all in place so that's how the axle is able to come in and out uh, for future maintenance you know replacing bushings or or whatever might need to be done so I've got the shift lever and a large washer right there which basically just gives it distance between the, the setup okay and then there's a another washer right there with the piece that the wheel mounts to and a bolt ran through the shaft which holds the uh, wheel in place of course so then we've got obviously our our tines there's a spacer another set of tines Here's the center brace, okay, another set of tines, another spacer, another set of tines, and then on this side I added, there we go, added a few extra washers right there, and that just takes out the slop or the slack in between the, uh, the tines so that nothing has room to uh, move around too much and, and create wear and tear. And then obviously the piece that the tires mounted to bolted to the axle another washer and then on this side another washer and the clevis pin as you can see down there so 
so now with this shifted back you can kind of see all of that better um, you have a, a lock nut a uh, jam nut on the other side of that little arm and then I have three washers um, and that was just to get the wheel spaced out where I wanted it you know I wanted plenty of space between the end of the axle and the wheel that's up in transport mode and this is attached to the G15 now by the way and then I will uh, lower it down into aeration mode
that worked out freaking fantastic. Um, that G15 is balanced out perfect with the uh, aerator behind it and the weights that I have on the front. So, I mean, I didn't have any issues with, uh, you know, popping a wheelie or anything like that. And the aeration quality is fantastic. Let me show you some of these plugs. Um, I'll just kind of walk through at random places, but, uh, you know, that's uh, a good two inch plug. And it's a core plug, you know, it's not just like my spike aerator that I was using before. Um, the ground is, as you can see, it's damp, but it's not wet. I mean, it's not soggy or anything. Um, but man, it was just plugging away. I mean, couldn't ask for more. That was awesome. Um, I actually probably ran over it more than I should have because one pass was sufficient. But uh, let me get here where I can show you kind of the rows. So you can see the rows where it aerated and uh, just did a phenomenal job. Now the time of day isn't really helping, but you can see the plugs laying everywhere. So my little, my little front yard here, you know, not very big, probably took me 10 minutes and that was just, that was playing around really, kind of playing with the speed and stuff like that. So look at the, uh, look at the mud caked up on the tires. And if you look at it up close, it's actually the plugs <laughs> where, they, where they stuck back to the tires after I'd ran over them. Because I kept, I kept going over the same areas sometimes instead of, uh, you know, instead of going over an area and then leaving it alone, like I should have done. I was overlapping and stuff like that, so uh, didn't didn't stick too bad on the drive tires. Um, front tires that are smooth caked those up pretty good, so. Not that that matters at all, but uh, yeah, there's a big plug on the tire right there. About a, about a good two, two and a half inch plug. I think the longest that I saw full plug was over here, and that was like a three inch plug. Um, most of these look like they're around inch and a half, two inches long. Um, where did I see that at? Yeah, right here. So that one looks like a little dog turd. Um, that's about a, a good two and a half inches, maybe three. Um, some of the longer ones that I saw. But, uh, man, absolutely nothing wrong with that. So, the only thing left to see, really, is... I'm sorry for the wind if that's picking up in the mic. Uh, I guess really the only thing left to see is how long is it going to hold up? You know, that's always the thing when you build something like this um, you know the creation is fun uh, seeing how long it's gonna last is uh, is really the trick so uh, from what I can tell the way it's built and uh, put together I think it's gonna last for a long time and those knives seem to be pretty tough I've I actually pulled up a couple rocks in my yard and, uh, and have visible tree roots that I ran over and it didn't really seem to care uh, I just kept plugging along and it's just using my body weight. So, you know, 175 um, doesn't seem to have any trouble handling my weight. And then, of course, the G15, perfect combination there. So, As you can see in transport mode, I've got a good three inches of clearance. So uh, what I'm going to do now is drive around the backyard and uh, get some of the mud knocked off the tires before I park this thing. But uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. So thanks for watching, guys. As always, appreciate your views and uh, appreciate all my subscribers. And I always have fun doing projects like this, and it's just fun bringing you guys along. So. Have a great day. Get out there and make some money, guys. We'll see you on the next one.